Today we're going to be looking at HTML5 storage features. Um, it has two APIs. We have local storage and session storage. And they have basically been a replacement for JavaScript cookies. Um, it's a faster, more secure way to store data locally in the user's browser. And the only difference between local and session is that session storage will go away as soon as your session ends. Uh, or as soon as the browser is closed. Local storage doesn't have a, an expiration date. It will basically be there until um, the user gets rid of it. All right, and th they're actually just key value pairs. All right, so it's very easy. Um, and I've made something real quick here. We have a form, and we have we can set a key and a value and store it in local storage. All right, so for instance, let's say uh, first name will be the key. Brad will be the value. If we save that, you can see it pops up over here. Let's put in the last name. Okay, so if we save it, and now if we go ahead and reload, that's going to stay there. And it's going to stay there until um, the user gets rid of it. All right, so this is what we're going to be building. And if you're using Google Chrome, you can use the, the um, if you hit F12, you can use the Chrome tools. And if we go to um, resources, you'll see this column over here, we have a, a local storage um, area we can look at. So let's click on that. Uh, actually, you know what? I think we're using session storage. Yeah, all right. So we're using session storage here. And you can see that we have the key and the value, all right? So if we add something else, say age 32, save. Uh, well, I guess it doesn't show up right away. Oh yeah, here it is. All right, age 32. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing. So let's um, I'm going to create a new file, and this is going to be just one HTML file. That's it. All right, so I'll call this um, web storage, and we want that to be HTML. So create a file called web storage.html. All right, now I want to open this in Sublime Text. You can use whatever editor you would like. All right, and let's open up this in the browser. All right, so now we have a clean slate to work with. So we want to just create our HTML shell. So we want the doc type. Doc type is going to be just HTML. We're using HTML5. HTML tags, let's get those out of the way. Um, we want our head area, and I'll just give it a title, just to look a little neater. Uh, we'll call it HTML5 Web Storage. All right, uh, and we want to put our JavaScript up here as well. So let's open up some script tags. Uh, let's see. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and create the form. We want our we want some body tags, of course. All right. So in here we want uh, let's create a section. This is an HTML5 element, and we'll give it an ID of uh, we'll just give it an ID of box. All right, because this is going to be just the the box that the form is enclosed in. All right, and we'll just close that tag section. And then inside here, let's create our form. All right, and our form tag doesn't need an action or a type or anything like that. Uh, let's see, we'll put each field inside of paragraph text, and I'm going to call this one the key. And I'm going to give it a line break and then the input. So input type is going to be text. Um, let's see, type is text. The ID we'll call key. Okay. Uh, all right, so that looks good. Um, let me stretch this open a little more. Yeah, it's a little easier to read. All right, so next we want the value. So I'm going to just uh, copy this. 
paste that in and we'll change this to the value in the ID as well. Okay, value. Um, now what we want is an input button, a save button. So we're going to, let's see, get rid of this. And the type here is going to be submit. Submit and let's see, we'll give it an ID of just button and then the value, the text we want the button to say will just be submit. All right, so let's go ahead, the quote, make sure you close the form. Uh, and then after the section, we need to create another section where we want our data to be displayed. So this will be section ID equals, uh, we'll say display data. All right, so that's good. That's really it for the HTML. Let's go ahead and save it and take a look. All right, so we haven't added any CSS. So what I'm gonna do is just paste in some CSS um, because it's not really the, the, the goal of this video. So um, we're gonna put this right in the head. All right, so very basic CSS. We just have the box, give it a width. We're gonna center it with margin auto and then our text area, our text box will have a, a width of 97%, um, five pixel radius. So let's save that. All right, so now we have our form and right now obviously nothing's gonna, gonna happen if we submit it. All right, so we need to add in our JavaScript to handle all that. And the first thing we want to do is add in, we need to have an event listener uh, to listen for our click, all right? And you can do this with jQuery as well, but I'm just going to use regular JavaScript um, in, this, in this video. So let's create a function, and I'm just going to call it do first, because we want this to run before we actually save the data. All right, so in here we're going to create a variable called button, and that will be equal to um, the button we have. So we'll say doc document. Um, I want to say document dot get element by ID. All right, so obviously that's going to do exactly what it says. It's going to grab it by the ID, and we gave it an ID of button. Let me just verify that. So input ID is button. All right, so that this is how we're grabbing this button. All right, and then under here we're going to say uh, button dot add event listener. Sorry, I can't really type and talk at the same time. Uh, listener. All right, and we're going to listen for a click. We need a click event. And let's see, when that when it's clicked, we want it to call the save, we'll just call it the save function. Uh, and then we want to put in false here. All right, and then we want to uh, run our display function, which we have to create. All right, so that's what that's gonna do. Um, now, under here, we're going to add um, the the add, add the event listener to the window. So we'll say window dot add event listener, and this is when it loads. All right, so we want to say load, and we're going to call do first false. All right. So now this is going to be called first and we want to run the save, we need to create the save function now. All right, so right here we'll say function save. And we want to grab the key and the value, and we can do that with the uh, get element by ID function. So I'm gonna copy that, and let's change this here to key, and it's gonna get by the ID of key, and then value. Okay, and we're going to grab that. We're going to grab the item with value for an ID. Uh, and let's see, we want, 
we want to set the item, the key value pair, um, using session storage. So we're going to say session storage uh, dot set item, and then we're going to put in here key value. All right. So this this here is the API. This is what sets it. This one line. So uh, really easy to work with. All right. So um, let's see. After that, we want to call display, which we still have to create. Um, and then let's see. We want it to clear. We want the input boxes to clear. So we're going to set key. I'm going to say key uh, dot value is going to be equal to nothing. Okay. We want to do the same with the value. Value dot value. Uh, is equal to nothing. All right, so that's the save function. This is really the heart and soul of it. This one line it's going to save our object. Now we need the display. So function display. And the first thing we want to do is get. Um, let me see. This display data uh, section. All right, we want to put that into a variable. So say variable um, display data. Display data is going to be equal to document get element by ID display data. All right, so that puts it into a variable for us. Then what we want to do is set it. We want to set it blank. All right, so we're going to say um, display data dot inner HTML is equal to nothing. All right. Now what we want to do is we need a loop so that we can loop through each key value and output that in the display. And we're going to use a for loop. All right, so what we're going to say here is we're going to set a variable. Uh, we'll say variable i is equal to zero. All right, then we need a semicolon, uh, and then we want to say as long as i, as long as i is less than session storage dot length. All right, and we're going to increment that by one. So I plus plus. So it's a very um, standard for loop. If you know JavaScript, then this is this should be quite easy to understand. So we're basically just looping through them all and outputting them onto the screen. All right. So we need to create. Uh, we need to get the key from inside this function. So I'm going to get create a variable called a and equal that to uh, session storage dot key and then we want to put the i variable in here all right and that will be replaced with whatever the uh, the number at that through that iteration so variable b will be equal to uh, session storage whoop, session storage dot get item all right so this is how you can get items and we want to put in here a the key okay um, and then finally, we want to set this. We want this to display. So we're going to say display data uh, dot inner HTML is going to be equal to. Oh, all right, it's going to be equal to. Actually, you know what? We set it to nothing up here, so we actually need to append down here. So we're going to say plus equals, which will append instead of overwrite. All right, so what we're going to put here is a. We want the variable a. We actually want to get rid of these quotes for now. I'm going to say a. And then we want to concatenate um, a string because we need a dash in between a and b. So um, we want to concatenate the quote, the quote with the dash like this. 
and then we want to go back to JavaScript and we want our B variable and then we want to again concatenate on a BR tag. Alright, so we'll say BR. Alright, so that's what this is doing. It's going to display the key, which is the variable A, and then the value, which is the variable B. Alright. And that should be good. Um, the last thing we want to do, we need to create a, a clear link. All right, I don't think we put that in yet. So down here, uh, still in the form after the save button, I'm going to create a link. And whoop, this is going to be equal to JavaScript. Okay, we're going to say JavaScript clear it. I'll just clear. All right. So what this link's going to do is call the clear function when it's clicked. We'll say clear items. All right. So now the last thing we need to do is to create that clear. So function clear. And let's see what this is going to do is just run the clear the clear method in the session storage API. So session storage dot clear. And then we want to reload. We want to reload the page. So we'll say location dot reload. All right, so that looks good. Let's uh, save this and test it out. Okay, so we'll say first name Brad alright so we have an issue here it's it's outputting the, this object HTML input element um, let's just check that out real quick it's coming from here oh up here we define the key and value uh, this needs to be the actual value alright so we want to add that on to the end of these. We don't want the element itself, we want the value in the element to be stored in these variables. So let's save that and go ahead and reload here. Now let's clear it and reload and we'll try this again. There we go. So it looks good, clear works. All right, so that's that's pretty much it. Um, the most important thing to, to remember about this is this, how to set the item, uh, set the key and the value, and then how to retrieve it, which is session storage dot get item. Um, in this example, we're doing it in a loop, but you can store single values and retrieve single, single um, key value pairs as well. Uh, Alright, so that's it. Thanks for watching.